Thanks, Victor. So I'm a consultant and have some stock options with A2 Surgical, a consultant with Smith & Nephew, and our fellowship receives uh, educational support from Smith & Nephew. So traditional management of labral tears consists of selective labral debridement. Traditional management of the labrum associated with pincer type impingement involves labral resection in order to perform acetabular rim resection. The most common site for labral tears is anterior superiorly. This may be for several reasons. One, it is the most common site for hip impingement. There was an embryologic study that showed that the collagen fibers of the anterior labrum were parallel to the labral chondral junction with a marginal attachment. And a biomechanical study showed that the anterior superior labrum had a lower compressive elastic modulus than the posterior labrum. There are some finite element models that have shown that the labrum primarily provides a seal. The loss of this labral seal increased solid on solid contact by about 92%. And this resulted in increased friction between the joint surfaces, which may predispose to premature degenerative changes. Biomechanical study in a cadaveric model looked at creating a labral tear and found decreased femoral stability relative to the acetabulum in the presence of a tear, and this was primarily in the extremes of external rotation. Look at Brian Kelly's study looking at the histology of the labrum. It's primarily an avascular structure with the primary blood supply coming from the capsular side. However, in a study by Mark Philippon, looking at 10 skeletally mature sheep, they created a labral tear, which was repaired with a suture anchor. And at three months, all of these were healed either by capsular healing, acetabular rim healing, or a combination of both. So with respect to indications, these are my indications, and by no means this is the standard. Uh, my indication for selective labral debridement is a degenerative labral tear with either intralabral cystic or calcific changes, complex degenerative tearing, or extensive intralabral ecchymosis, labral tears in the presence of degenerative changes, and a labral chondral disruption with CAM but no pincer type FAI can be managed with an articular sided labral debridement, but I would be careful because sometimes this tear will go up to the periphery but not extend through, and you may find yourself with very little labrum left in some situations which can disrupt the seal. And in some situations I've found that a refixation even in this case may better maintain a seal. So this is just an example of the uh, right hip. This is a shaver coming in. There's an articular sided labral tear. There was no associated pincer impingement. So the shaver is used to debride the labrum. And then we'll bring in a thermal device to finish up the uh, debridement, just getting rid of any unstable fragments there. My indications for focal labral excision are for an ossified labrum, as you see in the left hip up in the top x-ray, or degenerative labral tear in the presence of pincer type FAI in order to access the acetabular rim. Oftentimes in these cases, there are extensive calcific deposits or extensive ecchymosis. This first example, I should get going here. Can you advance that slide for me? It doesn't seem to be going. Can you advance the slide back there? Okay. So the next two videos, the first one's just going to show a labrum with some intralabral calcification. Uh, that patient has some pincer type impingement, and initially we're going to try to do a, a labral takedown, but we found that there was extensive calcification within that, so we subsequently debrided it. And the second case that hopefully we'll be able to bring up here just shows an anterior uh, acetabular rim ossification. And in the case where the labrum is ossified, essentially you need to uh, do a, a rim resection, including the labrum, because there's usually not much labrum left to uh, take down. Are we having any luck? So let me go. Can we go back one, or I can skip that slide if we can't? So the first example on the left there just shows that calcific deposit within the labrum, which looks like it might be just a small area. So initially with the pincer type impingement, we're going to attempt to do a, a labral takedown. But as we're going through the labrum, just more and more of this calcific deposit, almost like a calcific tendonitis type deposit, keeps coming out. 
And at that point, we just use a biter to excise the labrum along the region of pincer type impingement. And then we'll use a shaver to excise the remainder of the labrum prior to doing a rim resection. As you see, we're shaving the labrum. You can see that calcific deposit within the center of it. And I think I have to have you move forward to that next one. It doesn't seem to be going. And then this next example, you can see the labrum is fairly normal anterior superiorly, but there anteriorly, you've got an ossified labrum. So in that situation, we're going to simply use a burr to resect the labrum as it is ossified as there's not really much tissue to take down for a, a refixation in that case. And then we can go to the next slide. So my indications for labral repair. A labral tear with relatively healthy labral tissue, minimal degenerative changes, labral pathology in the presence of pincer type FAI in order to access the acetabular rim. Peripheral detachments are relatively rare and you see these most commonly associated with either a subluxation or traumatic dislocation. And really the majority of all of our repairs are, are refixations and this may have the added advantage of creating a bleeding surface for the relatively avascular labrum to heal back to. Forward please. So suture techniques, there's really two primary suture techniques that can be used. One is more of a mattress suture, which I think is more anatomic, and the other one is a loop-around type suture. There's really no data to support one or the other. A uh, question in my mind of whether the mattress suture creates more of a, an anatomic seal. Next slide. This is just an example of a, a mattress type stitch. We're placing a suture anchor in the acetabular rim. The labrum has been taken down. We pass one limb of the suture underneath the labrum. And then we're going to use this same device, uh, which we're going to pass through the base of the labrum. And by passing it through the base of the labrum, you don't allow the suture to constrict the labrum, and it leaves the, the free edge uh, to recreate the seal or, or maintains that triangular portion of the uh, labrum in this case. So the suture is now brought back. Your standard knot tying uh, technique is performed. And in this case, it was uh, five suture anchors that we used. You can see here that the, the labrum, again, the triangular or free edge of the labrum is uh, free to maintain a seal all the way around. And at this point, I'm going to release traction just to verify or at least evaluate for my own sake whether or not we're recreating the seal with the technique. So here we've released traction. And again, you can see in this case, the seal is maintained from anterior to more superior. Next slide. So in this case, we're going to do a loop around suture. And, and this is relatively simple. You just pass one limb of the suture underneath the labrum. And then the suture retriever is simply passed over the labrum, uh, looping it around the labrum, and then your standard knot tying. And, and this can be helpful in a case where you have a somewhat attenuated portion of the labrum uh, or a somewhat hypoplastic labrum in an area where you're worried about going through the labrum. So. Again, this is pretty straightforward, but it may be less anatomic than a mattress type stitch. So with respect to labral repair outcomes, there's not a lot of literature out there. If we look at Mark Philippon's study, he had 112 patients with FAI with minimum two-year follow-up. There were 58 repairs and 58 labral debridements. And in this study, labral repair was an independent predictor of a higher postoperative Harris hip score. One of the first studies to really the first study to look at labral refixation versus debridement was in an open surgical dislocation study. They looked at FAI patients. They had 25 consecutive hips that had essentially an excision of the entire labrum and compared that to 35 consecutive hips who had labral refixation. And at two years, their good to excellent follow-up was in 76% of the excision group compared to 94% of the refixation group. And there was greater radiographic degenerative changes in the excision group. We tried to simulate this study using an arthroscopic model, and we took 36 labral debridements, which were all done prior to our ever, for repair, or our ever performing our first repair. We did look back at the labrum. It's not perfect, but we did look back at the intraop images, MRIs, and tried to determine whether we thought they'd be repairable with our current techniques, and compared this to 39 labral repairs that were done after that. 
They all had FAI. We had a mean follow-up of 20 months, and our good to excellent results were in 68% in the debridement versus 90% in the refixation group, which is in pretty, pretty good line with the previous open study. I think it's also important, if you look at the video, to uh, assess and also treat any associated impingement to verify or to protect the repair and verify that you don't have any uh, damage that's going to be caused to that repair. But interestingly, if you look at some long-term follow-up that Tom, Thomas Bird has given us, this is 10-year follow-up in 52 hips. The mean improvement in the modified Harris hip score was 25 points. Uh, 14 of those patients went on for a total hip arthroplasty, but this is really prior to our performing arthroscopic treatment of FAI or labral repair. So good, good outcomes can be obtained in these patients long term. Unfortunately, we don't have a control group uh, for this study, so we don't really know if you had done a repair or if there was any associated impingement, would those patients have fared better or worse? So that really is unknown at this point in time. In conclusion, the labrum provides a seal which may be important for long-term hip health. Short-term clinical studies support labral refixation versus complete or focal excision. Specific repair techniques need further study to determine the optimal technique with respect to strength of repair, and I would say more importantly, maintenance of the labral seal. In the long-term consequence of labral debridement compared to the potential long-term advantage of labral repair remains to be seen. Thank you. Thank you very much.